Greetings. Thank you for tuning into this 2020 primary election candidate forum for the Thurston County Commissioner, District 2. The forum is presented by the League of Women Voters of Thurston County, along with the Thurston Community Network, excuse me, the Thurston Community Media, TCM. The forum is being held electronically. Candidates, moderators, and timers are all joining by Zoom links with the help of TCM. A bit about the League. The League is a nonprofit organization that encourages the informed and active participation of citizens in their government. The League neither supports nor opposes candidates or parties. We are nonpartisan. The League registers new voters, studies issues, and advocates for its positions with the legislature and other governmental bodies. The League is open, well, despite its name, the League is open to all people ages 16 and up. I'm Annie Cubberly I'm with the League, and I'll be moderating this forum. A timer will show a sign when you have 30 seconds left, and then again when you need to stop. If you're on the phone, the moderator, me, will let you know these times. The candidates for this position are Gary Edwards and Michael Stedman. For, this, for the forum, candidates will each have one minute to respond to a question about qualifications, followed by a series of questions in alternating order and ending with a one minute closing statement. The first question is why are you the most, can the most qualified for this position? So we're gonna start with Gary Edwards and follow with Michael Stedman. Each of you have one minute to respond. So Gary, we wanna start? Okay, are you ready? Yes. I believe that I am the most qualified for this position because I feel now more than ever, we need less partisan politics and more common sense to address the issues that we're be dealing with today. My family has been in actively involved in Thurston County for over 150 years. I want this place to be the best uh, community that it can possibly be so that my kids, grandkids, and great-grandkids will have a great place to live and work in the future. That's it. Thank you. Michael, do you want to follow that? Uh, yes, please. You guys ready? Yes. Okay, I'm going to read it off kind of quickly because i got a bunch here. So. Uh, I'm, I'm a council member in Lacey, a former planning commissioner, Marine Corps veteran, a small business owner, union sheet metal worker. I coached and officiated sports for decades. Uh, I held an enhanced above uh, top secret security clearance when I worked at the North, uh, nuclear lab in Livermore. Uh, I implement the three uh, I's in inclusion, innovation, and infrastructure every day to government. I have a proven track record for better public safety. Um, and investment in infrastructure. My wife, Shannon, works at Northern Public Schools and our kids attend there as well. I'm disciplined in budgeting and spending. I uh, led Lacey's revitalization after the worst recession in history. I'm a champion for, champion for environmental excellence. I've helped uh, enhance Lacey's relationships between, but not limited to the Nisqually tribe, JBLM, North Coast, North Thurston Public Schools, the Port of Olympia, local jurisdictions, and the business business community. Take a breath. <laughs> <laughs> I got halfway through anyways. Okay. <laughs> the following questions, the first respondent will have two minutes and the subsequent candidate will have one minute to respond. Um, so the first question is, how important is it to move forward with the regional climate mitigation plan? Uh, uh, Gary Edwards, do you want to start with that? Okay. I do think it's in, important to move forward. Uh, I think that we have a lot of environmental issues to deal with. And there are a lot of people that are currently uh, concerned about this issue. As well, I'm concerned. But my real issue when it comes to environment is the toxic chemical application in the headwaters of all the rivers in the Cascade Mountain Range. And we're dealing with 
cleanup at Capitol Lake and the Deschutes River is one of those rivers that are, for the last 50 years, we've had heavy nitrate application uh, by the ton through the forest industry that enhances the growth of those trees. That uh, nitrogen and other uh, chemicals that are in it, it, it is a, uh, there's pesticides and herbicides and other things. I don't know the complete uh, prescription because the timber industry keeps that private. But that leaches into our water, that goes down the river, goes into Capitol Lake, and that is causing us a big problem. So I know you asked about the climate uh, mitigation process, very important. I do think we need to spend a lot of effort on that, but I think we're missing the boat by not paying attention to what is going on with our clean water problems. And that's the lack of clean water, I guess is the best way to put it, because of chemical application to the water uh, by the corporate activities in this state and throughout the Northwest. So I'll just let it go with that. Okay, thank you. Michael Stedman. Can you repeat the question, please? Yes. How important is it to move forward with the regional climate mitigation plan? Uh, it's it's power. Uh, it's uh, paramount. Um, you know, it's it's uh, we need to be we all need to be better partners, not just the county or the local municipalities, but every single one of us needs to be more responsible when it comes to our environment and our surroundings and every step we can take, no matter how small or large um, to make a big impact or, you know, um, sooner rather as, as compared to later, we'll have a, the best and biggest impact on um, the quality of life our children and their children's, our children's children have when, when they um, are born and uh, live in here. Um, so um, it's very important to me. Um, and we need to have uh, people in leadership positions take a stronger stance and do what's right um, because there's only one earth there. Um, you know, what we're facing, it's not fake. It's not, you know, it's not fake news. It's not fake science. Science is real. It's fact. It's proven fact. Um, no matter how you feel or else it'd be a theory. And um, we need to be more um, serious uh, and um, effective and efficient in our leadership when it comes to our home. I mean, if so, that's that's my take on that. Thank you. So the next question is: What do you think are the three most important issues facing the county commissioners in the coming year? And Michael, we'll start with you this time. Okay, I, I, I muted it. So, oh. um, so uh, three. Um, Number one, I mean, the budget. Um, I mean, with the budget alone, you can cover, you know, the near, nearly exhausted reserves. Um, you know, the debt ceiling is at, at the, you know, we've exhausted that as well. Um, you know, they, they're in a pinch when it comes to money. They, they have more going out than they have coming in. Um, that's, that's one concern. You know, the environment, I talked about partnerships bef uh, earlier, just a minute ago. And, um, you know, though the county is a good partnership in the Lacey Veterans Service Hub, they can be far better partners in other things like homelessness and, and helping the local municipalities and people in general that are just struggling, you know, to, to deal with these everyday problems. And it's not all the county's fault, but they can, they can definitely do better. Um, so your third one, taking care of your infrastructure, you know, you'll hear me, um, just talk about all day long about the three eyes, innovation, inclusion, and infrastructure. They're all key to, um, responsible leadership. You can't build something with one time money and then not take care of it and expect it to be lasting and there for, um, everyone to the 30 seconds thing <laughs> threw me off a little bit. Um, it's just being responsible and, uh, 
you know, and if you're responsible, then then when there's a big ask and you go to the voters, they're more apt to be understanding because you took care of what you uh, were responsible in, in taking care of. So that's about it in, in a roundabout way. Okay, thank you. Gary Edwards. Okay, uh, budget is certainly one of them and balancing the budget with the limited uh, revenue that we have coming in. Economic engine. The economic engine needs to be kickstarted. We need to create good jobs here for our kids and grandkids in the future and those that are living here now. And by doing so, we'll alleviate the carbon footprint if everybody doesn't have to drive to the north to go to work every day. And the environment. The environment is a big piece of this issue. And the issue to me, there's plenty of people working on a lot of things, but you'll hear me talk about this past 50 years of chemical application to our forest with uh, very few people are even aware of it. It's not done illegally. It's done with permits issued by the Department of Ecology overseen by the Department of Natural Resources. But clean water is the biggest environmental issue that we have to deal with today. And it's come to a head now with our problem of cleaning up at Capitol Lake. But the business community needs to get going so we have good jobs, so we have revenue to come in to deal with the environment and the budget. That's it. Thank you. So the next question is, what steps will you take to ensure that people of color are treated fairly by law enforcement and within the, co the county criminal justice system? How would you track and measure that progress? Um, so just to switch it up, we will start with you, Gary, and then go to Michael. Thank you. Okay, on that topic, I mean, it, it's very timely, right? Because of the situation that we're in today. I can tell you that my last term as sheriff, I pulled together with others, not, not just by myself, but with others, we pulled together Lewis County, Grays Harbor County, Mason County, and Thurston County, and the municipalities within those jurisdictions. For every serious incident, that would take place, not necessarily involving racial activities, but use of force things. We would call on a multi-agency investigative team to look into that. And that way it was assured that there would be no cover up because we had too many people involved. You, you can't keep secrets when you've got a, a bunch of folks involved. And on that topic, I want to say we have a completely different culture in the Northwest than we do in the South or the East or even the Midwest of this country. I'm a graduate of the National FBI Academy. I have to tell you, I was a little disappointed when I attended back there to find out that the Mason-Dixon line was really alive and well yet. These are our law enforcement executives from really around the world, but what I'm referring to here is from the United States. And unfortunately, the Civil War was still going on. Now, I, I, got, I graduated 30 years ago, but we haven't fixed this problem yet, and we need to continue. And I can tell you, after I retired as sheriff, uh, Dan Kimball came in. He continued this whole program, made it better. Then John Snaza came in. They're still doing it today. So I think we have pretty good protection, but we can always do better. That is the main thing that we have to realize as we move forward. We might think we've got it under control, but we have always have the capability of doing better. And it'll take a lot of work. Uh, the county has just talked about putting together our citizen review committee uh, for those type of issues years ago, there was a committee appointed by the county commissioners of citizens in the county. Uh, for some reason, that went by the wayside quite a few years ago. We're going to re-implement that program 
as we move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Michael Stedman. Can you repeat the question again? Yes. What steps will you take to ensure that people of color are treated fairly by law enforcement and within the county criminal justice system? And how will you track and measure progress? Well, um, first of all, everything I do is about fairness and equality. Um, you know, every everything uh, is centered with empathy and respect for others. You know, Gary Gary mentioned that he went to FBI Academy. You know, my my twin brother and I, when we were kids, we dreamed of being a law enforcement officer. Um, you know, and, and my twin brothers got 27, 28 years plus um, with their, with the Yakima County and uh, local municipal, local PDs there. I'm post-certified. I, I, I've gone to an academy, um, you know, police officers, safety trained, certified. I, I, I totally understand that. But it's all about treating people civilly, equally, where everybody has the same voice and the same worth and the same value. No, no matter what you are, if you're a person or a business, you should all be treated fairly, equally across the board without, um, um, uh, it, it, without, res you know, uh, just period, be treated fairly. Um, so how would I do that? I mean, in Lacey, we've, we had a round table um, and now we're, we're forming a, a community uh, partnership to better get a grasp on this. I heard Olympia is doing the same thing, but it's only when everybody from any, every demographic, every, you know, age, race, culture, you name it, is involved and they all have a voice and all those voices have the same worth and value and they're heard and it's implemented, then that's when you're going you're gonna to see a common and you can measure on that. Thank you. The next question is, how should the county address transportation projects in light of I-970? Um, Gary, do you want to start with that? Do you mean the lack of funding because of <laughs> I-970? Sorry. Is, is that what we're talking about? Yeah. The lack of funding? Okay, well, we're just going to have to be smarter with our dollar expenditure. And I'm going to refer to a recent vote that uh, the county commission took on maintaining our infrastructure. A million dollars will chip seal about 25 miles of county road. We're going into our toughest budget cycle. Some are talking about this being something like uh, the depression of the 30s. The county has been talking about building a sand shed for the last 30 years. I'll take that back. For the last 10 years, it's been on the books, let's say. During that time, it's not been done because it was never figured out. This year, staff came to the county board and said they wanted to spend a million dollars to build a sand shed. Uh, I voted against building that sand shed because we are going into this tough budgetary time. My seatmates both voted in favor of building that sand shed. I think that was a terrible mistake when we're going into tough financial times to take on a project that's been on the books for 10 years, didn't really need to be done. What it does is keep the sand dry. Currently, we keep a tarp over the sand. I, I agree, we probably do need a sand shed at some point, but certainly not in our most toughest, the, the toughest economic times we're set to go through is not the time to take a million dollars away from our road project because that money has to be spent on infrastructure. And that was, uh, we, we can't take it from other funds. We can only take it out of the road fund. I think that was a big mistake to build that sand shed instead of uh, taking and doing 
25 miles of road because that protects the long life of the road. If we let it get deteriorated to a point, it just will not be able to be fixed without major construction. That'll be about it for that. Just an example. Michael? Can you repeat the question? Um, how should the county address transportation projects in, in light of um, I-970? Okay. Well, far before uh, that, um, we're in dire straits with our infrastructure. We, we have a, a, a track record nationally and locally and statewide of not taking care of what we build with one-time monies. Um, it's the political safe thing to do by kicking the can down the road and not taking care of your, your fiducial responsibility as elected official. So number one is be, be more responsible to your, your duties and your sworn uh, oath and take care of what, what you have, you know? I mean, we, could, we teach our kids every day to value and respect what, what they have or it's gonna go away. And it's no different as an adult. Um, and then if you don't, you're gonna lose the confidence of the voter in, in, in the uh, funding mechanisms that build these things that make a better quality of life uh, for, for our children, our families and their friends. You know, um, we have to not play it safe as elected officials, whether we get reelected or not. And we need to take care of what uh, we're mandated to take care of, period. Thank you. So the next question is, what are your plans for making the county economically viable in the future? How would you balance those plans with preserving the character of the county we now have? And let's start with you, Michael, this time. Okay. Well, and this is not a knock on Gary. Um, I love public service, but I'm the candidate that's lived in the, in the private sector my entire life. It's, my paycheck is not a guarantee that it's going to happen next week, let alone next month or next year. Okay. So what I do for my job directly affects not just me, especially as now as a pub, public servant, if I make bad decisions or wrong decisions, they're going to impact the whole entire city, let alone region and county. And in turn, it could cost people their jobs, you know, and, and the quality of life suffers. I understand that if you don't do the right things and you don't take care of business, business will take care of you. Plain and simple. So um, that, I mean, I think that covers everything. Okay, thank you. Gary, do you wanna answer that? Yes, uh, we've got the Growth Management Act that we uh, try to work within, or we, we do work within, it's the law. And uh, we can do that at the same time while we're, we are reducing some of the regulatory restrictions on the possibility of creating new business or building in this community. Uh, the, we, we've done some things like, like inspections, for an example. We're now moving into doing inspections and in, uh, the way we do them is you, the, the builder can now take his cell phone and take a picture of the footing, for example, that he might be pouring. And he sends that in to the building inspector. Uh, that's just one example. But what that does, the building inspector can now take care of about 25 different inspections as they move forward in their day. And the, the carbon footprint is reduced at the same time because they don't have to drive to these sites regularly. So instead of driving around and inspecting three or four places in a day, they can actually do about 20 inspections in one day. Now they're gonna have to go out some, but not near as much. So we're gonna protect the environment and prevent that contractor from the long delay that often takes place while they're waiting to get something uh, reviewed and they can't move ahead with their project until they do get it reviewed. So that's just one example. 
Thank you. Michael. Can you repeat it again, please? Yeah. How do you, oh, wait a minute. Um, what are your plans for making the county economically viable in the future? How would you balance those plans with preserving the character of the county we now have? All right. um, first of all, it's as local as you can get. It starts with families like mine and Gary's. It's a, uh, you know, um, especially if they're veteran based and, and my, minority owned and operated, um, that money stays here. We, we need to embrace that. We, we need to get people fired up to start their own businesses. We, we need to get incubator space so um, people working out of their garage can turn it turn that into an Apple computer. You know, uh, it's, it's just focusing on local. The more local you spend your money, means the longer that money stays here to improve our quality of life and generate um, a, a more robust uh, local economy. And in, in turns, in turn, you get the extra um, tax base to buy, you know, purchase parks and develop them. It, it goes on and on. It's all about the quality of life. And unless you take care of your business community and every business that's out there has a purpose, just like a person, but you need to embrace them, right? And the more local, the better. And treat them fair and equally, okay? Don't give up the bank on one end and, and, and super regulations on the other, depending on what it is, you know? So um, that's my thing. Uh, if you want a vibrant, robust economy, you take care of your local business, the smaller, the better, but they all have a place. Yeah. Okay, I have one more question before the wrap up. In this politically polarized time, what duty do you think elected officials have to correct misinformation and help unite constituents? Gary Edwards, you want to start with that? Okay. I believe that we need to be as open in government as we can possibly be, open and transparent. And I have to say, over the last couple of years, you uh, you will notice, and and uh, uh, Thurston Community Television is is very actively involved in this with the county. We are televising either through our local channel or through YouTube as many of our meetings as we possibly can. And that was not the way it was in the past. In the past, it was hard to keep track of what was going on at your local government. Now you can tune in and all the meetings that uh, amount to something, I guess is the best way that I'll put that, are either on YouTube or they're on Thurston County Media, one or the other. So I, I believe that openness and Truthfulness is the best cure for that particular problem of uh, developing trust. And we can go a long ways towards solving problems if we can, can fix the trust issue. Thank you. Michael. Um, the question again, so, uh, is, um, in, what else? In this politically polarized time, what duty do you think that elected officials have to correct misinformation and help unite constituents? Well, first of all, misinformation, it's, you know, don't feed into it, do your homework, you know, get other people engaged, um, get them involved. You know, in Lacey, we, we did the council on the road. Um, that was huge success. If they can't come to you for whatever reason, you go to them, get them involved in the community, get them vested in their neighbors and their family and their friends, you know, let them get to know their law enforcement. Law enforcement's there to, to support them and serve them and make, make a safe uh, environment for us all. You know, um, so, 
I just encourage everyone to get involved because if they do, then they, then they can't help but uh, learn the, um, the issues uh, that's surrounding them, affecting them every single day. They can get engaged in it. They can talk to their neighbors. And when you take every demographics view and, it, and listen to it, and then you can take bits and pieces from everybody and form the best solution that we can all live by and, and thrive in. So I guess that would be my answer. Okay. Uh, so the last thing is your one minute closing statement. So Gary, you wanna start with that? Okay. I mentioned earlier, my family's been around here for 150 years. I've got a lot of reasons to make sure that we make the right decisions at the county level to do our part in making this community the best place to live and work. And I really do think experience counts. Mike Stedman's a good fella, but I think the experience and I won't use against him. <laughs> Thank you for that, Gary. So, Michael, I guess it's your turn. Okay. Say, um, can you repeat the question again? Uh, I know it's it's just your closing statement. One minute. Okay. It's not a question. Well, I think what I'm going to do is you heard me say I'm a marine, local business owner, all that stuff. I'm. I left off half my qualifications and, and experience and, and why I'm the best candidate. And let me first start off by saying, Gary, I, I respect you a lot, um, your service to the community over the years. But, um, you know, I think you should be enjoying your retirement a little bit. So if I can help you along the way, please let me do. But um, so I bought my first house here when I was 19. I've been investing in the area ever since. I'm a lifelong volunteer for a dozen, of re a dozen regional and local nonprofit boards, commissions, and associations, both private and public, um, as well as business and residential ones. I attended college here before volunteering to serve in the Marine Corps. Um, I am the middle class. I am the working class. I was the first resident board member and, and vice president of Hawks Prairie Community Association, which is the largest HOA in Lacey that includes Jubilee Retirement Community. And I'm really about, oh, it's stop. You can yeah, finish right. your sentence. <laughs> oh, I'm about everybody being treated fairly and equally. I, you've heard me say it 500 times already in this thir short 30 minutes, but um, that's, and it, it's not just people, it's businesses and organizations, and it's just the right thing to do. Thank you. Well, that brings us to the end here. Um, Thank you for participating in this forum and thank you to Thurston Community Media for coordinating the forum using Zoom. The forum will be available on the TCM channels, on the League website, and as a YouTube video shortly after the forums are concluded. We're glad you've taken this opportunity to view this forum and we remind you to vote in the primary election beginning July 17th and closing August 4th, 2020. Thank you. Thank <music> you.